Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. The president of the Metro Detroit School Board is stirring up controversy for his comments about coronavirus and social media. Now parents are speaking out. And many sharing their admiration of civil rights icon Congressman John Lewis. We continue to celebrate his life and legacy. And taking a live look outside. Oh, I think you can see uh, one of our friendly bugs have joined us on that sky cam. <laughs> it is going to be a hot, hot day with a heat advisory on the way. Andrew has all the details. Good morning. It's 6 o'clock. I'm Priya Mann. And I'm Grant Hermes. Thanks for joining us here this morning on this Sunday morning. So Priya, yesterday was so steamy outside. Did you actually go for that run we were talking about? Yeah, I did. And you know what? I'm worried about today because I did it yesterday like mid-afternoon, but oh. I don't know how the temperatures are going to be mid-afternoon today. How did you survive yesterday's run in the mid-afternoon? <laughs> I, did, I did it. Lots, <laughs> lots and lots of water. <laughs> Andrew, today's going to be another steamy day. Oh, you got that right. I mean, it feels like a soft already we have temperatures that are in the 70s from overnight it feels like it's in the 80s higher temperatures today and things have changed since last night at 11 o'clock since you joined me then a heat advisory has been issued for Detroit and most of southeast Michigan it begins at 11 o'clock this morning goes through the evening because heat indices will easily be up to 100 degrees or more even by noontime or shortly afterward also there's still the threat of showers and thunderstorms. This is the driest portion of the day, quote unquote, coolest portion of the day. That's in quotes because we have temperatures in the middle and upper 70s right now. It'll be 84 to 85 degrees by noontime, all the way up to 93, 95 degrees for a high. But we've got to watch out for strong showers and thunderstorms as well. There's still a marginal to slight risk of them becoming strong to severe. 77 right now over at the airport. Those thunderstorms for now are off to our west with temperatures currently close to 80 degrees in some areas. Again, we'll talk about these thunderstorms later today. We'll talk about your seven day forecast as well in just minutes. All right, thank you, Andrew. Time now is 602 and to the very latest on the coronavirus and a look at the new numbers from the state as cases continue to tick upward. Michigan is reporting 678 new cases and nine new deaths. Our total case count now tops 73,000 with more than 55,000 people considered recovered. Well, he has a voice in what happens this school year, and parents say they're concerned about posts on social media from the Northville School Board president. On Facebook, he wrote the pandemic exists only in falsified statistics. Larry Spurl has more on what parents have to say about the social media posts. That school board president is not backing down from several posts he made on his Facebook page. We were supposed to talk to him, but he did cancel. But he sent us a statement basically saying those are his opinions. Northfield Public School Board President Matthew Wilkes' Facebook page is getting a lot of attention Saturday night after he suggested the coronavirus is a hoax. Part of that post says this pandemic exists only in falsified statistics shouted on the news without context. As a parent and as a PTA president, I'm very disappointed. Lisa McIntyre, the PTA president for Ridgewood Elementary in Northfield, cannot believe it. I was very surprised that he is our school board president. Wilk also stated in the world we live in, where literally everything gets captured by a cell phone, where are the video diaries of corona patients as their health declines? Where are the videos of panic in hospitals? They don't exist. He also suggests in this post that elderly can wear a spacesuit when they need to go out and shop and the rest of the world can go about their lives. I wish that this wasn't real. Dr. Raina Aldish with Henry Ford Hospital knows firsthand the reality of COVID-19. She's outraged by these statements. That's because she's also a Northville parent. I was really disappointed to see that someone in a public position of authority would use the kind of rhetoric that discredits science and government. Saturday, Wilk emailed me this statement. It says in part, First of all, my opinions are, were, and always have been my own and not the position of the Northville Board of Education. I stand as one person on that body, which acts only as a collective. He continues with, I know that with the help of our teachers, staff, administration, and parents, NPS students will be given the best education in the safest possible way. There is a petition online demanding that he resigns for a full look at his statement. Just go to our website, click on Detroit.com. Larry Sproul, Local 4.
All right, Larry, the Southfield Freeway is back open this morning. It was shut down overnight at Plymouth Road because of a shooting. Michigan State Police say when troopers arrived on scene, several motorcycles took off. One suspect is in custody and police have located a firearm that is suspected of being used in the incident. Injuries have been reported and the investigation continues. Time now 605 and a group called Detroit Will Breathe held a vigil last night along with friends and family of a man killed in an officer involved shooting. The vigil was held on San Juan near McNichols. It was in memory of Hakeem Littleton who was shot and killed by police July 10th. Police say the shooting was justified because Littleton fired at them first. Detroit Will Breathe says this isn't about if officers were justified to react. It's about the final moments of Littleton's life. Question is why did he have to die? And why was it okay to make that final shot to his head when he's already down? Hours after the shooting, Detroit police released this dash cam and body cam video showing what happened. Detroit Will Breathe is now asking for a full unedited audio and video version of before, during and after the shooting. Oakland County deputies need your help in finding a driver wanted in a deadly hit and run. Deputies tell us a man riding his bike was killed when the driver of a dark colored SUV hit him. It happened near Jesse and Osman in Pontiac. Police say the driver got out of her car to check on the man, but then drove off. If you know anything, deputies ask you to call them or remain anonymous. You can call 1-800-SPEAK-UP. There is a $1,000 reward. Well, friends and admirers of Georgia Congressman John Lewis have spent the day reflecting on his life and legacy. The civil rights icon died Friday after a long battle with cancer. He was the last living speaker from the 1963 March on Washington. He was just 23 years old when he addressed the crowd on the National Mall that day. NBC's Chris Pallone has more on how people are remembering the man who spent his life fighting for equality. In the midst of Congressman John Lewis's Georgia district, people have been showing up all day to pay respect and leave tributes to the man often called the conscience of the Congress. Lewis served the people of Atlanta for 33 years, but was on the national stage for much longer than that, emerging as one of the nation's top civil rights leaders in his early 20s, alongside the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Dad uh, certainly admired his energy, his tenacity, uh, and he admired Dad's leadership. Martin Luther King III said in fighting for voting rights, Lewis leaves behind an enduring legacy. We are seeing more young people engaged in voting. He's the one individual that personified more than anyone the importance of voting. Fellow civil rights leader and former Atlanta mayor Andrew Young said Lewis's death is not a tragedy because his impact lives on. Uh, just as Martin Luther King is still with us today more than 50 years after his death, I think we will never forget the role that John Lewis played in helping this nation uh, live out the true meaning of its creeds. Online, former President Barack Obama said of Lewis, he loved this country so much he risked his life and blood so it might live up to its promise. Obama's Vice President Joe Biden called Lewis a one-of-a-kind moral compass who always knew where to point us in which direction to march. Saturday afternoon, President Donald Trump tweeted, he was saddened to hear the news of civil rights hero John Lewis passing. He was the field commander. He was the soldier walking point. Historian John Meacham, currently working on a book about Lewis's life and legacy, called him a transcendent figure. He led the country to a fuller re recognition, if not a final reckoning, of our most serious national sins. Gone at 80, but John Lewis's march for justice continues on. Chris Pallone, NBC News. And tributes continue this morning for Congressman Lewis. He died after a six-month battle with pancreatic cancer. Congresswoman Debbie Dingell reflected on Lewis's legacy. And she talked about the longtime friendship between Lewis and her late husband, Congressman John Dingell. He'll just always be in my heart. And you know that he gave the eulogy at John's funeral. And I... So about 10 different people sent me a YouTube version of that this morning. And, you know, at some point you begin to realize there's a message here, get the strength to go watch it. And I just broke down and cried after it. And the words that he said of John are really words to say about himself. John Lewis is truly one of the most courageous men I know. And we also heard from Reverend Wendell Anthony, who said the congressman also always used to love to always used love to rise above hate. 
He recalled the time when Lewis made a trip here to Detroit for the NAACP. We were pleased to have him as the keynote speaker for the 56th annual Fight for Freedom Fund dinner here in the city of Detroit. Uh, he came and he blew the roof off. People wanted to touch him. Uh, he was, in, in, in my opinion and many others, the conscience of the nation. When he came um, across that bridge and when, he, and when he would come later on in life, as he was talking to young people about his experience, he would conclude by always saying, be bold, be courageous, be in the fight. We can fight until we win. And always remember this, if you're gonna be in trouble, be in good trouble, necessary trouble. And there's more reaction from local leaders and an in-depth look back at Congressman Lewis's life on the website, clickondetroit.com. We got a lot more coming up for you this morning, but first, let's check back in with Andrew. Yeah, Andrew, I don't know what time is good to take a stroll today because it's already hot. <laughs> Priya and Grant, you're absolutely right. Today's the day to find a shady spot or stay indoors where it's air conditioned. Not only that, where it's drier. We've got showers and thunderstorms appearing here on Storm Tracker 4. They're racing toward Detroit and Southeast Michigan. We'll talk about when they arrive, how long they stick around, and your seven day forecast in minutes. Tune in to Local 4 this Sunday at 12.30 p.m. 